And now, 32 Thoughts, presented by GMC. In our second intermission with the star of the Jeff Merrick radio show and his second in command, Elliot Friedman was filing on 32 <laughs> Thoughts, the podcast from his shower this week. So, uh, it's true. Yeah. Matthew Nice, he's going to make a splash. That's the question. Uh, that's good, Ron. Ooh, Very nice. good. Yeah. So this is what's going to happen. Toronto and Nice are going to meet over the next couple of days to discuss his future, and he's ready, and they would like to have him. Here's the issue. He's got unfinished business. His team, Michigan, was knocked out in the semifinals of the Frozen Four. They've got a good team coming back next year and also adding potentially Logan Cooley, one of the top picks eligible for this year's draft. So I think the biggest thing is, does Nyes want to go back next year and try to win a national championship? That's what Toronto's up against. I don't think this is a situation at all, Ron, where the Maple Leafs are worried they can't sign him long term. You know, one of the other names we're following right now, University of Denver's Carter Savoy. Right now, uh, Denver trailing Minnesota State at the end of 20 minutes of play, one nothing. Uh, goal there by Sam Morton. Question is, does he go back for his junior year or does he turn pro? And, Ron, we expect him uh, to come out of college, forego the junior year. It is certainly heading in that direction, and that's the expectation that uh, at the end of all of this, Carter Savoy will be a member of the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, a couple other things. First of all, Jaden Struble, we did it last week. We'll do it again this week. The expectation is he's going back to Northeastern, but not 100%. We should find out this week. The other player a number of teams are waiting on is Ben Myers, also from Minnesota. He is an unrestricted free agent. He's going to start taking uh, meetings on Monday with his reps from forward hockey, and then we'll see where it goes. I do believe there are some Canadian teams who are in this and have potentially a shot at it, but what Myers has been doing is narrowing down. He's got a ton of teams that have been asking about him. Dryden McKay, too, Elliot. Yes. You're doing him the decency yeah. of waiting until he plays the game. Actually, you know what, Ron? You, you, you asked me to yes. ask about him. Uh, the official response I got was, don't bug us until the game is right. over. So <laughs> yeah. there you go. The Hobie Baker winner. All right. Uh, San Jose Sharks. Jeff. So, yes, uh, Doug Wilson uh, announcing this week he's stepping down as general manager after 19 seasons of the, uh, of the San Jose Sharks. And the team announcing they will begin a search. And one name to keep an eye on through all of this is Arizona Coyotes assistant general manager John Ferguson. Now, John Ferguson most recently interviewed for the then vacant GM position of the Anaheim Ducks. As we all know, that went to Pat Verbeek. Actually, Ferguson interviewed with the San Jose Sharks back in 2003, had two interviews uh, with the team. The job eventually went to Doug Wilson. Wilson then hired John Ferguson as a scout after the Toronto Maple Leafs fired him. And Ferguson was pivotal in drafting Tomas Hurdle back in 2012. Elliot, I know this is really early in the process, but the whispers are already starting out there, and a name to keep an eye on is John Ferguson. Okay, just a few other things about San Jose. They are not afraid of a long search. If this goes past the Stanley Cup final because they have to speak to someone who's in it, they will do that. In addition to people like John Ferguson who have the more traditional backgrounds, they're also going to look at some untraditional backgrounds for this as well. They've had two general managers in 30 years, which is a credit to them, but also a belief that makes them think, we have to see see what else is out there and they really want to explore candidates who have no ties for the Sharks. I also think it's possible very likely that they will look for people to fill out the rest of their organization not just the GM spot but other people around it to make their organization a little bigger and a little more uh, opinionated. They're not afraid to have differing opinions. Joe Will the interim is on the search committee. Some people have made that wonder if he could get the job at the end. I think it's possible but unlikely. I think it's more likely they go outside and the other thing I heard guys is San Jose wants to expand their footprint in the market I think a someone who's willing to do a lot of media and be visible is going to be critical for this job last name for us is Michael Misa uh, Michael Misa has applied for exceptional status uh, and made headlines this week at the OHL Cup here he is on the left side of your screen number 66 five points in this final game against the junior Canadians breaking Connor McDavid's OHL Cup record Misa put up 21 points. Now, the exceptional status is an evaluation process that allows players to enter junior hockey a year early. Connor McDavid got this, John Tavares, Aaron Ekblad, most recently Shane Wright in the OHL. There was some talk that Misa might be denied along with two other players that applied. But after this performance at the OHL Cup run, it seems as if Hockey Canada and the Ontario Hockey Federation 
might be reconsidering or giving him a little more thought than previous. Now, there are teams in the USHL, Chicago Steel, for example, that have expressed interest uh, in Misa should he be denied. But this is going to be a crucial week. You know, his camp thought they were getting an answer around OHL Cup time. That hasn't happened. We'll see what happens. The OHL teams need a response. Their draft is April 29th. Great. Jeff Merrick, Elliott Friedman. Let me show you another Oakvillian. Uh, Mark Curtin, who is a mm. great realtor and, of course, was a great Toronto Maple Leaf. There you are, Mark, living with ALS. Six years since uh, you felt it and four years since the diagnosis with Lisa and Taylor and Adam and Sarah. It's incredible. And you're going out. I, I just love Mark. Everybody does. Uh, doing so much for ALS. He'll be at Vancouver for the games out there later in April. April as well. A short break and our coverage continues on Hockey Night in Canada.